You're listening to the Eldest Jiry Channel. <laughs> Motel by Dennis O'Shea Performed by Otis Jiry I awoke, sat upright. Oh, there was pain. Before I could open my eyes, the pain traveled to my head. It felt like my brain was two sizes too small for its container. I took a breath and opened my eyes. I was sitting on a dirty couch inside of a filthy motel room. Oh, my head. I moaned. To my left was a half-empty whiskey bottle. I don't drink, but I could taste it on my breath. I looked to my right, and sitting next to me on the couch was a revolver. I picked up the handgun out of reflex. Oh, shit. Prince. I cursed myself. Before I stood up, I decided to observe the room a little more closely. There was a filthy bed in the middle of the room, a TV in the corner, showing nothing but white noise, and there was a phone on a bedside table and empty miniature liquor bottles strewn throughout the room. What in the hell is going on? I decided to stand up, and as I did so, a black leather-bound notebook dropped to my feet. It had been resting on my lap. I got to my feet and reached for the notebook. I opened it to the latest entry. Didn't recognize the handwriting. The scruffy writing read, He came in through the front door. What is this? I whispered. Naturally, I started to flip backwards through the entries. On each page was a single message, hastily written. I saw him walking past the window. He shot me through the door. I took his gun. I closed the book and threw it back on the couch. Did someone leave this here? I asked myself out loud. And just as the book hit the cushion, the phone rang. I spun around to see it was the phone next to the bed. It rang with an accusing tone. I reached out to pick up the receiver, and I saw... I saw that my hand was missing a finger. My left index finger was missing from the joint. And it was dressed in a dirty rag. The horror of it being missing was interrupted by the phone ringing its loud, probing ring. I snatched up the receiver and barked my response. Hello? There was not quite a silence. I could hear somebody on the other end of the line, but they had decided to remain quiet. I was just about to yell to get some kind of reaction when, I'm coming for you again. The voice was dark and unnatural. The line suddenly went dead. Coming for me, are you? I growled in an angry, daring tone. I slammed the receiver down with a crunch. Oh, the pain from my finger wound fired up my arm, fueling me with more adrenaline as I stormed toward the couch. I picked up the revolver in my right hand and opened the cylinder to check the rounds. The two had already been fired. I will not be caught off guard, I whispered to myself. I slammed the cylinder shut with a flick of my wrist. Suddenly, there was a loud bang on the door. I pulled the hammer of the revolver back with my thumb. Cautiously, I took up position beside the door, remembering the page from the notebook. I was about to speak when I noticed a bullet hole in the door. I looked opposite and could see where the bullet hole had ended its journey, right there in the wall. Who is it? I asked with authority. Again, it was silence. There was somebody remaining quiet. I heard a familiar sound. There was a hammer being pulled back on a revolver, followed shortly by, I'm here. It was the same voice on the telephone, no mistaking it. Now it was my turn to remain silent. I stood, waiting, patiently. Another bang on the door. I did not flinch. Moments passed. The tension was mounting. Silence. 
A similar bang boomed on the window. I spun around and positioned myself to fire if anything came through, but it never did. I stood, waiting for what seemed like hours, but could only have been moments, until I could not fight the curiosity any more. I just had to take a peek, see what I was dealing with. I peered through the window. There he was, a silhouette of a man in a trench coat and hat. A cliché. He turned to look at me, but in an instant turned back towards my room door. The door burst open, and I spun around as fast as I could, only to see the stranger was already right in front of me. The gun in his right hand was pointed at me. He'd beaten me. The stranger still appeared as a silhouette, despite all the light all around him. I waited for him to speak, to taunt me. He just stood there. My adrenaline was coursing. I could feel it thump through my veins. I was glazed in sweat. Well, I may as well try. I raised my handgun to point it at the stranger. He fired first, before I could even fully raise my weapon. Three shots rang out. They all hit my chest with a heavy thud, but I was still standing. Shock and adrenaline kept me on my feet. I returned fire, three for three. He stumbled backwards, dragging himself across the wall, until he collided with the open door, which closed it. He ended up sliding to a sitting position against the closed metal motel room door. My blood, along with my strength, started to drain from me as I almost dropped the pistol. I walked a staggered walk toward the couch and collapsed. I placed the pistol next to me on the couch. The pain was starting to sink into me. I reached for the whiskey and took a sip purely for medicinal purposes, I told myself. Another big gulp and the whiskey started to do its job. I resealed the bottle and dropped it back onto the couch. My eyes were drawn to the dead stranger. I did not have the strength to approach him. Still, as he lay there, he appeared as a shadow, a shadow that bleeds. His pistol sat in his right hand, almost as if he could easily use it again. It was the same model as mine. I felt the need to look away. There on the couch to my right was the notebook. It had been staring at me the whole time. I realized I would never make it to the phone. It was entirely too late for me, and yet... I still needed to look inside the notebook again. This time I would read it from the front, as it should be. To my horror, the writing was entirely different. It was mine, and it read, A man tried to kill me. The next entry read, He shot me in the chest. I flipped through a few entries until I found one covered in blood. The entry was again written scruffily. It took my finger. Did I write all of these entries? I hadn't noticed before, but there was a pen sitting on the couch to my left. I picked it up and began to write with my left hand. I shot him three times. The handwriting was a match. I could not work out what was happening. My strength was low now. Oblivion awaited. I closed the book and dropped the pen to the floor. As darkness crept into my vision, I once again looked to my fallen enemy and noticed his left hand. To my horror and confusion, his left index finger was missing from the joint. The shadowy figure began to fade until it had completely vanished from sight. All my strength was gone, and darkness was completely enveloping me. I felt cold. I awoke, sat upright. There was pain. Before I could open my eyes, the pain traveled to my head. I felt like my brain was two sizes too small for its container.